thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, as mentioned, I have been uh, using WordPress quite a while. Uh, last few years, I have been working mostly in enterprise environments, so with large uh, code base uh, that requires like a lot of uh, like approval process or code reviews and some like pipelines to, uh, to be uh, require some pipelines to be executed before the code reaches the production. Uh, so I'd like to share uh, some of the knowledge I uh, gained during that experience uh, regarding testing WordPress plugins. Uh, so I'll be going over uh, what is unit testing. I'll uh, briefly talk about some uh, benefits of, of unit testing and show you some tools and setting uh, 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 tools and uh, I'll show you how to set up an environment for running unit tests and uh, show you how to scaffold the uh, test suite for uh, plugin using WPCLI and uh, I'll do some quick demo of writing and running tests. So then at the end, uh, I'll show you some, like give you some links or advices uh, uh, where to go for learning more. So what is unit testing? Uh, it's a uh, software testing method and it verifies uh, individual units of code. Uh, those are mostly functions and it makes sure they are working as expected. So in most cases, you just run some function or the method of an object and check the result. If the result is uh, is same as you expected result, if it matches your expectations. So the ultimate ultimate goal is to ensure that the behavior of that function stays consistent. So it doesn't change when you do some refactoring or do some additional changes to your code. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, different benefits of unit testing. Uh, first of all, it's better quality. The, uh, as, as, as you start testing your code, uh, you, you will notice that the, the quality of your code uh, uh, starts to increase. And uh, also, the testing, is, testing with unit tests allows you to test uh, to be more granular, to go a more granular level than point and click testing with a graphical user interface. So usually what you do with, uh, if you don't write unit tests, you just go to the plugin page or the some admin screen or the front end and just click around, uh, try to go to some, to some link or click the button and see the expected result. Uh, but with unit tests, you go uh, much uh, granul granular level. Uh, you can uh, check out the code bases of large and very uh, popular uh, plugins like Jetpack or Yoast SEO and uh, see how they are uh, running their tests too. And all of those uh, uh, large plugins, especially popular plugins that are uh, that's used on millions of websites, uh, they all have some kind of automated tests uh, to like uh, keep the quality consistent. Uh, so once you have uh, a test suite, refactoring your code becomes much easier and you will have much more confidence in, uh, on updates uh, you introduce to your code base. Uh, because you will have a safety net uh, uh, as a uh, test suite uh, that will catch your errors if uh, that happens. For example, you can, you can change the, uh, your function uh, since the result uh, stays consistent, same, uh, like you can like ensure it using your, by running your tests. Uh, it allows uh, uh, you to f debug faster, so uh, uh, if some kind of bug uh, uh, will happen in your code after your changes, you will quickly catch that uh, uh, by running your tests. Uh, and you can also add additional tests to make sure though that error uh, does not happen again, uh, does not occur again. Uh, and tests can uh, provide some documentation to your code too. Uh, so like uh, you can read the tests and that uh, by, by reading the tests, you can see uh, how that uh, particular part of the code should behave because tests uh, will like 
uh, checks the behavior of that code and uh, expected results of, uh, of that code. And you can also use uh, your te that those tests to design your code too. Uh, th uh, that's known as uh, TDD in uh, software engineering, uh, test-driven development. So you, in, in this case, you write tests before you write your actual code. You, you can uh, start uh, writing a test for the code that doesn't exist yet. Uh, so that test will, of course, fail, but once you uh, see that the test is failing, then you like uh, fix that uh, like failing test by implementing the actual code. That way, you 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 can design your uh, code like you can decide on the name of the class, name of the method, uh, what kind of like uh, data that function should return, what kind of argument that uh, function should receive. All those uh, uh, things will be designed uh, while you uh, write your tests. Uh, so what do you need to start testing uh, WordPress uh, plugins? Uh, so uh, to do that, you will need Unix-based operating system. Uh, like, it's very hard with Windows. If you use Windows, uh, like, uh, don't even try. Uh, but there are ways uh, uh, you can run, of course, uh, 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 to like, there are some workarounds. Uh, you can find uh, some workarounds on WordPress Handbook too. But I find it waste of time to spend, uh, and sometimes it's not very consistent. So you need the Unix-based operating system, PHP, of course, and MySQL, PHP Unit, the testing library, and WordPress Test Suite, uh, uh, and WPCLI, which is optional. Uh, you can uh, create, uh, you can write those tests yourself, but also you can use WPCLI to scaffold the first tests. So uh, if you like manually, one by one, install all these tools, uh, like for newcomers, for someone new in this area, it may be a bit hard uh, or uh, like they, they may stuck at, at some point for example like installing there are different ways of installing PHP unit there are different ways of installing uh, like MySQL or MariaDB and also WordPress test suite also like uh, it's not uh, really like always easy to uh, install and set up so uh, if you need already set up environment, uh, uh, I would recommend using VVV. It's a varying vagrant. vagrant. It's a pre-configured virtual machine. And uh, it's a recommended local de uh, development environment for contributing WordPress core to. And yeah, you can find more information about it on their website. But basically, it's a, a, a virtual machine. Uh, that has all the tools uh, installed, and you can run it on Mac, on Windows, and you can run your tests inside that virtual machine, and run your, of course, like all the website and all your code too. So it comes with a bunch of stuff, and it, it has all the required things uh, for, for starting to test your plugins. So, as I mentioned, uh, you can, like start building your test suite manually. Uh, you can start uh, building your configuration files and uh, 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 start creating your uh, PHP files with tests manually. But um, WPCLI comes very uh, with very handy uh, command that allows you to scaffold the initial tests very quickly. So I recommend uh, starting with that uh, when, when, if you want to implement a test suite for your plugin. So the command is very easy, WP scaffold, plugin tests, and the plugin's name. Uh, so you can learn more about it on the uh, handbook of WPCLI, uh, but uh, what it does is it just creates uh, some like boilerplate to start uh, testing your plugin. So I'll do a quick demonstration of this command. Uh, before that, uh, I just have one uh, simple plugin 
uh, that I will be using for uh, uh, for, for this demonstration. I just uh, want to introduce you uh, what this plugin does and what kind of files it has. So basically, it's a, a plugin that adds a widget uh, that displays some stats about the website. The stats, is, stats are very basic. It shows just uh, number of published posts and pages. So like main plugin file requiring two, uh, three classes and uh, initializing the plugin class, then uh, running its init method. This is, so under the PHP folder, I have all these three uh, classes. Uh, plugin class, stats class. Stats class has get site stats, which uh, returns the, those actual stats. And the widget, uh, which extends WP widget uh, to display uh, all this data as a widget. And I have a template that has an HTML code of that uh, uh, widget itself. That's it, and readme file. Uh, visually, it looks like this, so uh, plugin on the front end uh, this is the how it looks like site stats number of published posts number of published pages that's it so if i add one more post and publish it and go to the front end you see it? number of published posts are now two uh, so i will be using this plugin for like demonstration of these tests uh, so I'm inside that VBV, a virtual machine. I'm, uh, I just went to the plugin folder and running that command, WP scaffold plugin tests and the plugin's name, simple site stats. Say success created test files. So let's see what it created. It created these files in red, uh, this XML file, this file YAML, this configuration file in XML, and it created this tests folder in inside this bootstrap PHP, a test sample PHP, and this bin folder, it has a bash script. Okay, let's see what they are. Uh, PHP unit XML this is a configuration file for PHP unit it will have like <coughs> all the configurations needed for your test suite and uh, the bash script under bin folder is a script uh, for configuring the WordPress test suite and the test database and bootstrap PHP is a file that uh, makes the current plugin active when running the test suite it bootstraps WordPress core and then adds your plugins code to its uh, plugins folder or activates your plugin and then you can uh, start testing it. Uh, test sample PHP is a sample file containing the uh, first actual test and two other uh, files, uh, <coughs> PHP CS, XML test and the Travis YAML are optional in our case, we don't need it, uh, but they are very useful. I would uh, recommend uh, to I take a look at them too because the uh, PHP CS uh, XML file is a configuration for uh, PHP code sniffer, which allows you to run uh, linting tool uh, to test your PHP code with its comp compatibility with it with the WordPress coding standards. So it makes uh, if you run PHP in the code sniffer, it makes sure that you are following WordPress coding standards. If you are, for example, uh, have some issues in your code, it will uh, warn you. Uh, Travis uh, YAML file will allow you to integrate uh, with CI uh, continuous integration system. Uh, so uh, it. Uh, you will have already configured file for Travis if you want to integrate uh, continuous integration system uh, to your code. But we will not be doing it. It's out of scope of our, our presentation today. Um, but it's, th those are very handy configurations to bootstrap the process of continuous integration. Uh, uh, let's quickly review PHP unit uh, XML this file, so 
Uh, main important part is this test suite uh, part. So you can have multiple test suites. In our case, well, we, uh, for this uh, simple plugin, we, uh, only one test suite will be enough. But you can uh, uh, divide your test suites if your test suite becomes uh, very large and then you can run them like separately. Uh, so directory uh, tag says that it has a property of pre uh, prefix and suffix, which uh, this means is it searches your tests inside the tests directory and it checks for uh, plugins that start, uh, it searches for files that start with test dash and ends with .php. So if you add a file that's uh, file with a name that starts with test dash and ends with PHP, it automatically adds them or runs them when you run a PHP unit on the console. Uh, and it's excluding this file for now here, uh, so it will not run that file even it uh, meets this uh, criteria. And the bootstrap PHP, as I mentioned, it's bootstrapping here, the like getting the tests their environment variable. It uh, searches the WordPress test suite in that folder. And then, uh, so, and then it includes those files. If it cannot find it, it shows an error message uh, could not find this PHP file. Did you run bin install wp test test dot sh? That's the that bash script that uh, wpcli generated for us. So that means uh, you re you need to run that bash script if you want to set up the environment. But in our case, we are using vvv. That's why I'm not I will not run that bash script. But if you want to use uh, set up uh, like testing environment and custom Unix box, uh, you, you will need to run that uh, file. So uh, then it, as I mentioned, it like, uh, requires that functions PHP, then uh, lo uh, loads our plugin, simple site stats PHP. Uh, these environment variables are very important, WP test there and WP core there. If you echo them on the console on uh, VVV box, you can see where are they are located. So this is the location of the Word, WordPress test suite, and the second one is the WordPress core that you are will, that you will be using to run your tests. And that uh, Bash script uh, downloads the required WordPress version, installs the WordPress test suite, defines those two variables, creates the uh, database for tests and uh, it prepares, like basically prepares the testing environment. Again, as I mentioned, you don't need to run it in VVV because it already has all that environment. Uh, but uh, running it in, is very important on, for example, if you uh, set up a continuous integration pipeline, uh, uh, you can see th that in the Travis YAML file too, it will run this file and prepare the testing environment first. You can uh, test your plugin with different versions of plugin, with different, ver with, with different versions of WordPress and with different versions of PHP. Uh, so which will ensure your plugin's compatibility with different versions of PHP and WordPress, uh, which is good. So. Uh, you can see it on the code basis of, for example, the OCCL or uh, other popular plugins that you can see that they, they test their code with different versions of PHP and WordPress. And the like, main important file with test is test-sample.php. It will have only one uh, function called test-sample. Uh, so uh, I'll go over what it does in the next slides. Uh, so if you notice, this class is extending WP unit test case. Uh, WP unit test case is a class defined in the WordPress test suite. Uh, and it extends the test case class of PHP unit. So it adds additional functionality to PHP unit. Uh, 
so it includes additional functions and assertions useful for WordPress. And uh, if the term assertion is not familiar with, uh, you are not familiar with that term, I'll, uh, uh, I'll uh, define that in the next slide. So we'll see that. Don't worry about it if you don't know. So WordPress tests uh, should inherit uh, from uh, this uh, class uh, because it adds additional functionality to, uh, to your tests and you can use it. So what is a test? Test is uh, in, uh, any public method inside that class that inherits from uh, test case class of PHP unit or PHP unit test case. And it must start with a test underscore prefix. So if your method's name starts uh, with test underscore, then PHP unit will count it as a test and execute it. Uh, you, if you don't like it, you can also use it uh, at test uh, inside. Uh, you can mark the test method with at test in the doc block. And that's another way of uh, defining the test. Uh, here you can see two different methods. One starts with test underscore, one, another is, has just at test in the doc block. Both are like tests. And when you run PHP unit, these methods will be executed. Now assertions. Uh, assertions are methods uh, uh, just like this, assert true in these uh, test methods, assert true, assert true. So, and they are, used, they are used to assert that actual value matches an expected value. So with these methods, this assertion, there are a bunch of assertion methods available with PHP unit and WordPress test suite adds additional sum. Uh, uh, like assert true, assert false, assert equals, assert null, assert contains, assert sync, string starts with. So uh, you can uh, see the full list on PHP units documentation. Uh, but the, what I mentioned are one of uh, some of the very like frequent ones that you use. Uh, like in this slide, also you can see some uh, samples like assert app, like testing. If here you see the stack is. Uh, uh, empty array and this method will assert that if it's empty. If it's not empty, it will re, uh, like fail the test and you will see that on the uh, console. Uh, here's a, some sample code, uh, like very simple class. Uh, has add method and subtract method. Add method receives two arguments and returns the sum of them. So just adds two numbers. So I'll sh uh, let's see how the code uh, that tests this method looks like. Uh, so you write another class. Notice that its name is different, of course, test calculator. But you are free to name it uh, as you wish, like it's not important. But it should extend the test case uh, class. And we're adding a method called test underscore add. So it should start with test underscore uh, uh, if you want to execute it. Uh, you can have all different other methods too, uh, uh, but only the ones that start with test underscore or as a add test doc block uh, will be executed when you run PHP unit uh, on the console. So, so what this method is doing, it's uh, initiate, initializing the Calculator, it's creating its object. Uh, and then this assert equals, uh, using this uh, assertion method, we're asserting that if we uh, run add method with arguments two and two, the result will be equal to four. That, that easy. So that way we are testing if the method is working correctly. So if the uh, if it doesn't, then this line will fail and show you an error message that shows what was the expected value, what was the like returned value. You can have multiple assertions. Like you can uh, test with, for example, negative numbers. You can test with, for example, uh, uh, decimal point numbers. So you can have multiple assertions in, in, in your test method. Um, with WordPress, 
plugins, of course, uh, usually uh, it's your methods do not look like this add method, right? It's not that simple as like uh, adding two numbers. You usually use different WordPress methods. It's tightly integrated with WordPress. You run a lot of different WordPress uh, built-in functions like add action, add filter, you like create some posts, add metadata to different posts, or read that metadata. So it's very integrated with WordPress. So, uh, another type of the tests are called integration tests. Uh, they are basically same as unit tests, but uh, they are not isolated to one method only. Like uh, unit tests, uh, do not write to database or read the file, but integration tests can. They can write to a file, they can open a database connection, write to the database, read from the database, do something over the network, run some uh, WordPress uh, methods, uh, and et cetera. So uh, with WordPress, you usually write like integration tests, but basically they are same as unit tests uh, that we reviewed a bit earlier. So, so I'll try to do some like live demo. Like usually things uh, can go wrong uh, during the, these live demos. Uh, uh, will be, uh, there will not be a lot of issues, but I will do some on purpose mistakes too, just to show you how the things work. Uh, let's do it. So first of all, before doing anything else, I would like to try to run that first test we have, this test. Test sample assert true. So what's it doing? It's, it's just dummy assertion. It's just testing if the true is equal to true. True, true is always equal to true. So it should pass it. Uh, this, this test should pass. So like to run this test, I, I run PHP unit on the folder where the PHP unit configuration file, that XML file is. It's basically the root folder of our plugin. PHP unit, hitting enter, it sets up the testing, uh, uh, bootstraps the testing environment, and it run, and at the end you see that no tests executed. Why? Because uh, if you notice in the configuration file, PHP unit XML, this file was excluded. So this is done on purpose. So you, it, uh, you didn't run this uh, sample test when you, with your real tests. I'll remove this exclude from the configuration so that test file uh, is executed. It matches the criteria, right? The, the file name test dash sample matches, it's, it has a test dash prefix and it's, it ends with .php, so it, we should be good. So let's run it. And here you go. One test, one assertion, and it passed. Okay. Uh, let me show you how it would, it would look if it failed. So assert true if I put here false and run it again, it will fail says that uh, failed asserting that false is true. Okay, it's working, uh, but we don't wanna do this. Like we don't wanna like assert true is equal to true, but we want to test the real code. Uh, let's uh, test this uh, get site stats method of the stats class here. Uh, it's the like main functionality of this website, uh, this plugin, if you notice, it returns that those stats. So it's returning an array with post and page keys and it gets the, the stats from WP count posts method of uh, WordPress core. And this, uh, this function returns an object with number of posts for each status. For example, if you pass here post, it returns an object with a number of uh, published posts, 
uh, number of posts is in the trash status, number of posts in draft status, and same for page. Um, so, like first thing we see is it returns an array. Let's make sure this uh, function, this method returns an array. So, like to use this function, I need to create the instance of the stats class. So, stats is equal to new stats. And uh, then let's get the result of it. Site stats is equal to stats get site stats. Now we can start writing assertions. Uh, what do we want to make sure? It returns an array. So this assert true is array, this is PHP function, site stats. Oops. So this is easy. It's like we are asserting that this site stats is an array. This array returns true if the site stats is array. So saving it, running the unit, uh, PHP unit, it passed. What else we can test? We can test that that array contains those specific keys. So there are some assertion methods for that too. This assert array has key and keys name. We must have a post key. And page key. Remember the function here? Returns an array with post and page keys. So let's run this again. Now it again pass what but see it, it three assertions was that. One test but three assertions. So we can we can add more tests. Um, uh, for example, let's um, make sure uh, this uh, this get site stats uh, method returns actual uh, like number number of posts like if zero one or two or three like to make sure if it's uh, we want to make sure it's working correctly uh, before doing that I just want to quickly do, do you, uh, refactoring here, like when the test is working, this file doesn't look good. It say, still says sample test. Uh, the method says test sample. It's not a sample anymore, anymore. it's real uh, test uh, in our test suite. So let me change the class name uh, from sample test to test stats. And I'll change it here in the doc block to uh, let's uh, give some meaningful name to the method to test if get site stats returns an array. And in the doc block, test for the get site stats method. And you can do like C doc block and give some reference to where that sets uh, get site stats method is. It's inside the site stats, uh, the stats class, and the method is this. Um, so, did you notice it's adding this uh, namespace everywhere? Like to get rid of it, I can add uh, th add this class to that namespace we have, simple site stats this inside this uh, plugin. And as soon as I add this, this uh, will not be available. I need to start from the root name namespace because it's in the global, not inside this class inside, not inside our namespace, it's in the root. Uh, now I can get rid of this because I, we are already inside our 
own namespace, so it would be much better. And also, I want to rename this uh, file test sample PHP uh, to like uh, test stats, uh, like poor WordPress coding standards. Your class files must start with class prefix, uh, class test stats PHP. Now the file name is test uh, class test stats PHP and the class name is test stats. I think it all looks good now. Uh, let's try running the PHP unit again. It says no tests executed. Any idea why it happened? Why it's not running T our tests? Most of the file has to be tested. That's right. Good catch, and in our configuration, uh, PHP unit XML file, we have a criteria for the test files that those test files must start with test dash prefix. I rename it to class dash test dash stats. So uh, let's add class here too. Now that means all files that start with class dash test dash uh, will be executed as a uh, test files. So go back to console and again we are back one test with three assertions. Okay, uh, now we can uh, add one more test. Let's do actual test of the numbers. Uh, so I'll just copy paste this part. I'll just copy paste this and create another test method. Uh, of course, name this test if get site stats returns uh, correct numbers. Um, again, I need to create its instance, run the uh, method. And now let's start testing uh, this assert equals. So when I run the get site stats, what will be the result uh, number of posts in the empty website? It's going to be zero, right? We don't have any posts yet. So I want to make sure uh, this. Uh, site stats post and we are testing published post publish is equal to zero running it it passed same thing for page two this is making sure the number of uh, Initially, without any posts, this uh, like method is returning zero number of posts and zero number of pages. Uh, now, how to make sure this? Uh, so right now we didn't create any posts in, in our like system in our testing environment. There is no uh, posts or pages. That's why it's returning zero. Uh, how to make sure this works with existing uh, po uh, like posts or like like it returns correct value when there are some posts? So you can create uh, uh, you can create a, uh, some sample uh, posts inside test suite inside your testing environment, and this class WP Unit Test Case allows you to do that. There are some factories that allows you to generate some posts. Uh, uh, posts, pages, or uh, some taxonomies, taxonomy terms, uh, users inside your uh, test environment. Uh, that's uh, called the uh, factory method. So this factory post create. And you can uh, pass the post type here, post type is post. Uh, so what 
this method does is it creates a new post uh, inside uh, inside your testing environment. So let me create a couple posts. Uh, six, three. We created three posts and one page. And and now we can assert again. So what what's the number of posts now? Two. And number of pages is one. So run it. It should fail. Why? It says there was one error. Argument two should be an array inside correct numbers. So, so it's that. Publish, publish. Oh, I, I did here the uh, post type. You also need equals greater than post type minus greater than. Sorry? Uh, you also need post type equals greater than post type. Name is not. So is that E in that battle? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, uh, this must be array. Yeah. Yeah, good catch. Uh, so, yeah. And now let's run this. Now it fails again. Now it says better message fail return uh, asserting that zero match is expected too. Uh, so somehow site stats post publish is still zero because uh, this method was executed before we created the post. Uh, so I'll just run it again to get the fresh data from the database. And <coughs> now our pass should, uh, test should pass. So that's how you test it, the, your WordPress plugins. You write this kind of tests for each, your, uh, each part of your uh, uh, test and uh, each part of your code and test it if it's behaving correctly as expected. And Yes, in a conclusion, I can say that it's hard to get started. You've probably noticed that. And you need to motivate to start doing this. And it, went, it even may seem pointless first, uh, why you are like, writing all this code. But in the long term, you will see those obvious uh, benefits that I uh, counted in the beginning of my slides. So as soon as you do first refactoring to your code after having a test suite in, inside your uh, code base, you will see that benefit. You will see how it's catching your uh, mistakes, how, how it's catching the problems occurred after you refactored your code. And, uh, like, and you will see uh, from there, you, you will see those obvious results. Then at some point, you may start doing uh, TDD, writing tests before actually writing your code, uh, which is another like level up. Uh, to learn more, uh, you can check out the code bases of those uh, like popular plugins. You can check the code base of WordPress Core too. WordPress Core also has a lot of different tests. Uh, uh, learn uh, more about PHP unit assertions, and uh, there's a good uh, uh, like series of uh, articles on PHP unit, uh, on mock objects, stop methods, dependency injection. Uh, I would recommend uh, reading those uh, like articles too. Uh, these are like 
more like uh, adv uh, once you like start testing you will be at some point stuck on uh, like questions like how do I test for example the API call so you don't want to run the API call with actual uh, keys and credentials uh, you can mock that calls and create some um, uh, like mock results and then test your part of the code and don't care about the API and those kind of things yeah thank you if you have any questions Yes. So uh, I'm, uh, I didn't install the PHP unit uh, here, but you can uh, install PHP unit in any like method you uh, wish. So actually, uh, installing it with Composer is good idea. It's a uh, recommended way uh, because uh, PHP unit has many different versions too. VVV is like uh, dedicated for WordPress only. That's why it has it already has the. Uh, correct version of PHP unit, but uh, if you want to like run it in some uh, different place, and if you want to uh, like uh, have a control over the versions, of course, uh, uh, installing the PHP unit via Composer is a good idea. You can, of course, you install it via Composer and run it from vendor folder. So install it with. Composer and run instead of PHP unit, you run it vendor slash bin slash PHP unit, and it works same way. And would you also need to install like the WordPress Yeah, of course. For that, for that, you have to run that bash script uh, that was generated by WPCLI, and that bash script will pull. WordPress core, WordPress test suite, then creates uh, required tables in your database and sets up those environment variables uh, for running it and prepares your environment. And you can see it in the Travis YAML file generated. So uh, when, when the test suite is executed in this um, other server, we have tra Travis, the uh, continuous integration system, everything must be manually set up. For so you can see that it runs the, the, the batch script, it runs the PHP unit. Uh, one uh, thing about the PHP unit, late, latest version of PHP unit is seven, but WordPress core is not compatible. WordPress test suite is not compatible with it yet. So uh, you should uh, use PHP unit version six uh, for running PHP, uh, WordPress unit tests. Other questions? Well, if you have any other questions, maybe later you can always uh, find me here. Or you can find me uh, in many different places. Uh, I'm at Behezad, my first name. It's uh, one of the benefits of having a very rare name. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on WordPress org or GitHub. I did similar presentation uh, earlier this year in San Diego. I, I see the shirt here from San Diego. So uh, it's recorded. You can see that it's more introduction. Uh, so there I showed how to do this uh, for a new plugins. So you can generate, scaffold a new plugin and start writing tests for it. So uh, like, uh, uh, some of the slides uh, from this presentations are very similar. Thank you.